What did he say? Now therefore fear the Lord. Now therefore, you that see in these churches, Amen. fear the Lord. Fear, fear the, Lord. the Lord enough that you leave them. That's right. These false churches. That's right. Fear the Lord enough that you leave these unscriptural man-made religions. Amen. Amen. Well, I was coming to church this morning. I was fishing through the radio to see what I can listen to and and I just left it where it was and and here was a man telling the people, you that are listening now, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. <laughs> I'm not a man that rolled his eyes, but I was in my car. <laughs> Go ahead, God. People today, some of them know certain things in the Bible. But they are afraid how it would make others feel if they live by what they know. That's right. They are more concerned how their father going to act, their mother going to act, their sons and daughters going to act, their brothers and sisters, the people on the job. You're more concerned how people are going to react towards you, how many friends you're going to lose, more than you are how God going to react towards you. Now, when you fear the Lord, your priorities are in order. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? When you fear God, you take a stand and your stand will be challenged to all of my teachers that teach in the schools. When your school try to urge you to teach a homosexual curriculum, teach it. And teach it right. Don't tell them you won't teach it. Right. Teach it. But teach it right. And if your principal or the school superintendent come and said we gave a homosexual curriculum and we noticed that you are telling the boys you can't marry your own kind and the girls, that's not our curriculum. Tell them I brought them the curriculum of their creator. That's right. That's right. Now, if they threaten your job, you must fear God enough where you will not flinch, you will not compromise, and you will not tell them, uh, I think about it. I ain't got to think about nothing. You know, at one time, when I was younger, I thought about being a school teacher. I end up being a teacher anyway. But if I was in the schools, with this knowledge now, I would challenge the school superintendent. You see, brothers and sisters, you should never buckle when holiness is challenged in your lifestyle. Don't you know what the word of God says about holiness? It is an invincible shield. You see, you so-called Christians, you will do anything and say anything to keep that job and to salvage your check. But a true child of God, don't you hear? 
Ruth and Naomi? Don't you hear Esther? If I die, let me die. You don't find that type of thinking today among God's people. Look at what Balak offered Balaam. Silver. Gold. Position. Balaam said, if you fill this house with silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord to do more or less. What happened to that old-fashioned godly mind? Give me the book of Mark. I want to show you what happened to that mind. That mind, the mind of God out of the people was the lust for other things. That's right. It entered in that's right. and it affected the word that's in us. In the book of St. Mark chapter 4, and we'll start at verse 18. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Mark, Give chapter and verse again. St. Mark chapter 4 and at the 18th verse. All right, Mark 4, 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns. Yes. Yeah. Such as hear the word. They hear it. And the cares of this world. Do you hear this? Amen. The cares, the concerns of this world. And the deceitfulness, and the deceitfulness, of, deceitfulness of what? Of riches. It's not a sin to be rich. Sin is when riches possess you. That's right. It was God that made Solomon rich. That's right. But most rich people don't want God. Are you listening? Because in their mind, what need do they have for God when they got all this money? Right. So to pretend they have some form of spiritualism, they may go to church on Easter. That's right. Or go on Christmas. Or go on some holiday. And for some strange reason, these wealthy bourgeoisie fellas think they've done God a favor. That's right. Listen, Mr. Rich Man and Rich Woman. You can't extend life. There's nothing in your bank account that extends life. That's right. There's nothing in your safe deposit box that's going to extend life. They that trust in their wealth. Listen. In the book of Psalms 49 and at verse 6. They that trust in their wealth. In their wealth. And boast themselves. And boast themselves. In the multitude of their riches. In the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother. None can redeem his brother. Nor give to God a ransom for him. Nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious. And it ceaseth forever. When your buddy, your friend die, your money can't bring them back. That's right. Look at the many millions of rich people that's dead already. That's right. Now let's get back to the church folk yeah. in the book of Mark. Listen. Back in Mark chapter 4 and at verse 19. I want you to pay close attention to this. I want to take my time and soak it. Mark chapter 4 and at verse 19. All right. And the cares of this world. The cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. The deceitfulness of riches. And the lust. The lust. Of other things. Of other things. It, when, all, when the cares of this world come in your life, the trickery of riches mm -hmm. and the lust. Of the other reason things. why it says the deceitfulness of riches, because the word of God says the love of money is the root of all evil. When you love money more than God, you will pursue that money even if you got to break God's commandment. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. When you love God more than money, you will turn down any amount just to stay on good terms with God. The love of money. It love didn't it. say to have money is the root. 
It says to love it. Love it. Love it. My brother Tony Harvin, I was talking about these false prophets, how there's a video when they got money all over the pulpit and Creflo O'Dollar and some other false prophet is running across the pulpit talking about we're going to anoint the money. Anoint the money. I mean, they're running through the money, kicking it. Anoint the money, anoint the money, sliding all through it. My Lord, my Lord. And people jumping out of their chairs, throwing more money. This clownage. Church have became lower than a dog's house. Amen. And people of God love it. Don't say, wait a minute, Pastor Jennings. Don't you mean them that say they are of God? Give me Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. I believe chapter 5. Chapter 5. And verse 30. Jeremiah. And then go back to Mark. Jeremiah chapter 5 and at verse 30. All right. And when the Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 30. All right. A wonderful and horrible thing. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land is committed in the land the prophets prophesy falsely the preachers prophesy falsely the and the messengers prophesy falsely and, and the priests bear ruled by their means what do you mean bear ruled by their means the preachers made themselves preachers right. they couldn't get a job so they lied and said they got a calling and they went up in the pulpit and now the people pay them that's right Huh? That's right. He couldn't find work or he got laid off and he couldn't find nothing else to do. So he said, oh, I think I would be a reverend. Amen. So he got on in the pulpit. Now he got all your money. Live better than you do. Listen. The prophets prophesy falsely. The prophet prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their means. And tell us how the people feel about a man prophesying lies, because that's falsely, that's right. and a self-made preacher, not a God-made preacher, a self-made preacher. How did the Bible say the people feel? And my people. God talking. And my people. God said my people. Love to have it so. Amen. 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 And my people. Love to have it so. They love to see the scams. That's right. They love the churches where celebrities come to and make them feel important. What a celebrity got over Jesus. Give me the church that Jesus is in. You can have your celebrities. If God is not there, that church is dead. How do the people feel? And my people love to have it so. Love. You love to love. have the church where you can play the lottery. That's right. You love to have the church where you can go on the prom and get pregnant and then get on your choir. That's right. You love to have the church where your preacher don't have a first lady. He got the first man. You love the churches where the pastor act more feminine than his wife. That's right. That's right. God says, my people. My people love to have it so. Something is wrong with God's people. Love it. Love it. And here is God in his mercy giving you time. And these men are preaching like they got a lot of time. Why are we preaching so hard? Because I understand that the end is nigh. And being that the end is close, you can't play with the book. You can't play church. The preachers got you under this illusion. You got a lot of time. No, you don't. The day of the Lord will come. In the days of Noah, the Lord gave them back then 
120 years to get it right. And not in 120 years did they get it right. You know, the apostolics and other churches taught that when the Bible says the number of man shall be 120 years, they said that's when God lengthened man life expand. No, that's how long God gave Noah a period to preach. That's right. And the preachers said Noah was the only one preaching. Right. Give me Genesis, mm -hmm. then we'll get Joshua. First in the book of Genesis chapter 6. I want to show you how many men was preaching in Noah's day and what 120 years represent. That's right. Then First, we'll go back to the book of Mark. Amen. Listen. First in Genesis chapter 6, we'll start at verse 1. Give chapter and verse again. Genesis chapter 6, and we're at the first verse. What is it? And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. What happened? And daughters were born unto them. Yes. But the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Yes. And they took them wives of all which they chose. All right. And the Lord said. And the Lord said. My spirit shall not always strive with man. All right, yeah. Viewers, remember he said as it was in Noah's day, so shall it be when the son of man come. Right. He told you, I'm not always going to strive with you. I'm not always going to be patient with you. I'm not always going to tolerate you. I'm not always going to give you a lot of time. For that he also is flesh. I'm not always going to strive with man saying he you nothing but flesh. Uh -huh. Yet his days. Yet his days. Shall be in 120 years. Now, Genesis didn't give you the detail of the 120 years. No. Genesis didn't tell us what went on those 120 years. That's right. Give me the book of Joshua. Now in the book of Joshua chapter 5. And we'll start at verse 8. Follow me. For thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Behold. Look. I give you a period of 120 years. I give you a years. period. Of 120 years. If ye turn to me. If you turn to me. And forsake your evil ways. And stop your evil doing. Then will I also turn away from the evil. Then I will also turn away from the evil. Which I told you. The 120 years was a time that God gave man to repent and get right. And if man would have done it, there would not be no flood. That's right. That's right. Man could have humbled himself. That's right. And no flood. No flood. And the Lord granted them a period. The Lord granted them a period. A period. Of 120 of one years. 120 years. Saying if they will return. Saying if they will do what? If they will return. Wait a minute. For God to say return, that means they left him. That's right. God is saying the same thing now. That's right. Come on back. Come on back to God. You know better. Go ahead. You know you ain't got no business marrying a man. Come back to God. Hallelujah. You know better than to be out here half naked. Come back to God. Right. You preachers, you know you are using the people for money. Come back to God. Amen. The Holy Book says what? If they will return. If they will return. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If they will return. Then will God repent then of the evil. God will repent of the evil. So as to not to destroy the earth. So as not to destroy the earth. Now in the book of Joshua chapter 5. What is it? Now in verse 9. What is it? And Noah. And Noah. Who else? And Methuselah. No, just Noah. And Noah and Methuselah. Noah and the oldest man that lived. That's right. Noah and, and Methuselah, Methuselah spoke all the words of the Lord. They spoke all the words of the Lord to the sons of men. To the sons of men. Day after day. Day after day. Constantly. How often? Constantly. How often? Constantly. That's what we got to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You brothers and minister, Hallelujah. you got to do it constantly. Hallelujah. Paul said, Moreover, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Constantly. You got to be consistent. That's right. 
Hallelujah. You wealthy preachers. There is no such thing as a preacher retiring. The Bible says, be thou faithful unto death. Hallelujah. They got to die in it. Ain't no retirement. Bless the name of God. What did he say? And Noah and Methuselah. Noah and Methuselah spoke all the words spoke of the Spoke all Lord the words of the Lord. Of the Lord. To the sons of men. To the sons of men. Day after day. Day after day. Constantly. Constantly. Speaking to them. Speaking to them. But. But. The sons of men would not hearken to them. That's the way folks are now. Here they are. As they were in the days of Noah, That's right. so shall it be when the Son of Man come. Right. Go back to the book of Mark and let's see what have interfered with the people of God. Back in Mark chapter 4 and at verse 19. Follow me. And the cares of this world. Cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. You see, the love of money have crept into the church so much. <laughs> These preachers are willing to say anything. They're willing to do anything. Any type of scheme, trace your hand on paper and send it to them, or put your hand on the television, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you and him are partners. Amen. Peter pop off toilet water <laughs> that he called miracle water. I remember when I first commented about it, Peter pop off sent me a personal letter. He said, I dare you. <laughs> Talking about my water is toilet water. Many miracles. Bring me your water. I'll make you lick it up. Amen. These men are hustlers. They are nothing but schemers. Glory to God, but we're going to break it up as long as we live. Amen. What did the Bible say? And the cares of this world. The cares of this world. And the deceitfulness the of riches. The deceitfulness of wealth. And the lust of other things. And the lust, the longing, the craving. For other things, entering, how does it affect? Where entering does, in. Where, where does it go? Entering in. Where does it go? Entering in. Amen. Let's see where it goes. Now, let's see how does it enter in. For these things to distract me from God, it have to enter in here, mind, and it have to enter in here, heart. It entered into my mind and I find myself constantly dwelling on it. That's right. Dwelling on it. It entered into my heart because my heart started to begin to love and get attached to the kernel thought that I had. That's it. So now my love for money, my thought for money, I'm all about the dollar. You can hear folks say, I'm all about the dollar. You ask them, what about God? Well, I get him, you know. Look how cheap they talk about them. The love of money. It is the love of money that have made men turn their backs on God. Some preachers, when they had a small church, what people call storefront church, some preachers was pretty tough. I mean, solid. Humble. Fearing the Lord. Move with fear. But all of a sudden when they started getting larger, it became less and less spiritual, less and less biblical, less and less scriptural, and more and more entertainment, and more and more ungodliness. And more and more opinion, and more and more theory, and less and less scripture. So what happened? The preacher started saying, well, I know we used to do this 30 years ago, but these are modern times now. Uh, we ain't got to do that no more. Listen how... When these things get in us, 
what it do to the word. And the lust of other things entering in choke the word. Hold it. Choke. Come here, Carter. It does what? Choke the word. Now. <laughs> They can't talk that good. Is that right? Amen. Amen. I'm going to demonstrate this. Demonstrate it. <laughs> demonstrate it. I can't think of a better brother <laughs> right now than Carter. Can you raise your voice? Can you raise your voice? Huh? Can you raise your voice? I mean, you got a thick neck. Can you raise your voice? Now. A natural choke limit the supply of oxygen to brain, correct? That's right. If the supply of oxygen start to be limited towards the brain, it affect my process to think. So then, if the word of God choke. is being choked, choked, there's something, something yeah. that got a hold on you that's affecting your thought process. No longer do you think the way God wants you to think. Because just like your breast travels to hear, the word travels to hear. The Bible said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. But if something I get a hold to, choke. choking, choke. what does it say to choke? Choke the word. Wait a minute. It chokes what? The word. That's, that's something. My involvement, my lust, my distraction put a stranglehold on what I've learned. That's right. Until I act so like I have no teaching. Amen. Are you listening? The word, word. have been choked out of thousands. For some of my women that are watching, you have met some man and your love for him have choked the word out of you. Some of the men that are watching, you have met some woman and your lusts for her have choked the word right out of you. That's right. That's right. No girlfriend should be able to text you and make you leave church to get in bed with her. No boyfriend should be able to call you and make you leave church. And when it choked the word out of you that says touch not, you would haul those cases up in your track work and your Budweiser Amen. can peak with the only wise God. That's right. You gotta be sincere about your Lord. The Hebrew brothers were sincere about the Lord until they was willing to get tossed in fire. And the Lord let them know, you're not in here alone. You're not in here alone. So your stand in God is going to be tested and you're going to be tossed in fire. God going to give the devil permission. Get him. Get her. They say they believe in me. Get them. God wanted people to be tried in the fire. You know a blacksmith get that iron put it in fire work on it put it back in fire that's the way God do his people he lets you get in fire. Hallelujah. 
Glory! When the blacksmith work on it, he's want to shape it. He got to bring shape to it. That's the way God do us. Let us go in the fire and let the word work on us. Glory, honey. Glory! Let the word just work on it. Until God shape you into what God wants you to be. The Bible says, take it not strange. Hallelujah. Concerning the fiery trial. If we are God's people, you got to be tossed in the fire. A blacksmith, fire, and a hammer. God use the same thing. God say, is not my word like a hammer and a fire and a, like a rock stone that break rocks in pieces. A hammer that break rocks in pieces. So a blacksmith, he'll take the iron, put it in fire. You know why he's hitting it? He got to shape it. Firm it. That, that still cannot be shaped A preacher is a spiritual blacksmith. Is not my you word. You folk that follow these false prophets, you know why you still sinners? Because he don't have what it takes to shape you. God got to make a blacksmith that's not scared to use that hammer. Work on the man. Work on the woman. Work on the man. Work on the woman. Work on the man. Work on the woman. And then when you're done, God look at you and see how beautiful, how wonderful at your name. What did Jeremiah say? In Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 29. Give chapter and verse again. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 29. Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word. Is not my word. Like as a fire. Like as a fire. If God's word is like a fire, everything in us that's not like God must be burnt up by him. That's right. Is not my word. Like as a fire. Bless the name of God. Like a fire, saith the Lord, saith the Lord, and, and like a hammer. That's why I am like I am. That's right. Yeah. Like a hammer. That break it. You out there, yeah. you don't want to get hit. Yeah. But God gave me the hammer. hammer. I got to hit you. Yeah. Do this thing That's right. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. I got to hit like you. A hammer. Glory to God. I can't help myself. That's right. Glory to God. I just got to do it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said I can't help myself. Like a What did the Holy Ghost say? It's not my word. It's not my word. Like as a fire. Glory to God. Like a fire. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. And like a hammer. And it's like a hammer. That breaketh. That the, break the rock in pieces. When I see two men getting married, yeah. got to hit you. That's right. Hey, and Ricky Smiley, just yeah. like women, Hammer. one for Perry, one for Smiley. Yeah. When I see Trump, that racist President Trump, when I see him, Hammer. got to hit Trump. Hammer. When I see Congress rebel against God, in America. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey. All of America. Oh, hey. You must get hit. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, take off. Go ahead. What did he say, son? It's not my word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, take God. Go ahead, take God. It's not my word. It's not my word. Like as a fire, saith the Lord. Anytime a preacher. Is scared to use that hammer. hammer. Get out the pulpit. That's right. Get out. That's right. Get out of it. Get out of it. Hallelujah. 
I got to use it. You may not like me, but I'm gonna use it while you don't like it. I gotta keep swinging. If I'm asleep, I'm gonna wake up swinging. How long? You got to swing that word till you die. If you're in a wheelchair and they roll you to the microphone, you may be weak, may be frail. Swing that word. Go ahead and go. Go right. Hallelujah. Go right. He said, preach the word. Be in season. In season. Out of season. Go right. Go ahead. Hallelujah, God. You got the swing. Go ahead. And preach it like God has it. That's it. You preachers, if you're scared to hammer. use that hammer, hammer. get out the pulpit. Get out the pulpit. Get out of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not my word. What is that? It's not my word. Glory to God. Like as a fire. It's not my word. Like as a fire. It's like fire. Say it the Lord. Hallelujah. Something strong. Go ahead. Sound. Break up the unrighteousness that is in us. Don't we do so? Finish up with Joshua. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody all right? Amen. Hallelujah. What is that? Back in Joshua chapter, Joshua 24, chapter 24. And verse 14. The word. Hallelujah. Don't let no one choke it out of you. Hallelujah. If it get in you, Hallelujah. let it stay there. Hallelujah. No money. Hallelujah. No prosperity. Hallelujah. 
no man, no woman, no job. Don't let none of that make you reject God. I don't care how weak you are. You may be weak, but let the weak say I'm strong. Huh? Glory to God. It's all right. Yeah. What did he say, son? Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. You that are watching. Hallelujah. If you fear God, Hallelujah. take a cigarette out your mouth. Hallelujah. You that are looking at me now, laying next to your boyfriend, you know that ain't your husband. Get up. Don't ask him, am I talking to you? Get up. Yes, you. Put your clothes on. Go ahead. Go home. And if he's at your apartment, throw him out. Because God's word is a hammer. It's a hammer. And it's going to come between you and him. Oh, yeah. And it's going to destroy your entire bedroom. Go ahead. What did he say? Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. This was the Holy Ghost brought here today. Wonderful. Fear the Lord and serve him. Serve him in sincerity. Truth. And how? In truth. Wait a minute. Serve him in sincerity. Be sincere and in truth. Be sincere and what else? And in truth. We have that. Hallelujah. We can do it the way God wants it. We can do it the way God wants it. Sincerity and truth. Truth. Dearest, if you want this truth, Hallelujah. repent. 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 That's it. Repent. Repent. Oh, we'll take God and be baptized. That's right. Every one of you, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. hallelujah. For the remission of your sins. Hallelujah. Let the Lord fill you with the Holy Ghost speaking another tongue. Hallelujah. Let's get all that verse. Now therefore. Now therefore. Fear the Lord. All right, Trent. Fear the Lord. Believe it or not. Fearing him is the conclusion of all things. That's it. it is written, let us say the conclusion of the whole matter. Whole matter. Fear God. Fear God. And then what he said? That's right. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole or the, the complete duty of man. Hallelujah. We're obligated. Hallelujah. Without question, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord. I said we're obligated. Yeah? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Whether you're black, white, brown, yellow, or red, holiness is the message of God for all nations. It's for all nations under the sun. Hallelujah. What he said? Now therefore, fear the Lord. Now therefore, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. And serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served. Wait. Put away what man set up. That's right. Go after God. That's right. And come out of your man-made religions. Amen. That's what your father said. Sir. Stuff that been set up by the flesh to appease the flesh and move on you or deal with you or encourage you to go against God's everlasting word. That's right. Uh -huh. And put away the gods which your father served and on the other side of the flood. Yes. And in Egypt. Wait a minute. They did it when? On the other side of the flood. Let me open that up. Amen. There's two sides of the flood. That's right. That's right. The other side of the flood was dirty. But when the flood subsided, the whole earth was clean. That's right. For the flood did two things. It saved and destroyed. That's right. It destroyed all of them that didn't want to obey Noah. That's right. But it saved them that got in the ark. And the flood raised the ark. That's right. Mm. Are you listening? And put away the gods. Put away the gods. Which your father served on the other side all right, of viewers. the flood. All right, viewers. Your father served Baptist. That's right. Your father served Methodist and Presbyterian and Lutheran and Catholic, Christian scientists, Scientology, Pentecostal, Apostolic, 
That's Your right. father served all that. That's right. Five percenters. Amen. Your father served all that Mormons. Put away. That's the stuff your father served. That's right. And God said, put away the gods <laughs> which your father served. Put away your worship. Which your father served. That your father served. On the other side of the flood. Of the other side of the flood. Because during that time they wouldn't listen to the message. That's so right. on the other side of the flood, they was married and given in marriage. Hard head, stubborn, wouldn't pay Noah the preacher no mind. Wouldn't listen to Noah, wouldn't listen to Methuselah. That's right. That's on the other side of the flood. The other side of the flood. Glory to God, but when the flood came, it cleansed the earth. That's right. Eh? And put when the away flood came, when the flood came, it cleansed the earth. That's right. That's right. Glory to God, when uh, Jesus was pierced in his side and blood and water came out. Do you get what I'm telling you? Go ahead. What is it? And put, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. Be quick. And in Egypt. And in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. Amen. Who should the world serve? Serve ye the Lord. Who should the world serve? Serve the Lord. Ephesians 4, 5. One Lord. Then Acts 9, 5. Uh, uh, it says, serve the Lord. I want to tell you how many lords it is. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to tell you the Lord's name. In Ephesians that chapter way, four, when you do five. serve him, you know who you're serving. That's right. And you know how many you're serving. That's right. All right. In Ephesians chapter 4 and at verse 5. What is it? One Lord. Glory to God. Who shall we serve? Serve ye the Lord. How many of them? One Lord. One? One? One Lord. Let's One. find out his name. Acts I want to alternate all three. Right. All right. Acts chapter 9 and at verse 5. What? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, And the Lord said, I am Jesus. And the Bible said, How many lords it is? One Lord. And the Bible said, Who shall we serve? Serve ye the Lord. And the scripture said, Who is the Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many laws did the scripture say? One Lord. Who did the scripture say we should serve? Serve you the Lord. And who did the Lord say he was? And the Lord said I am Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't care where you move. That's right. Word of God have you boxed in. That's right. Sinner, it doesn't matter you have your position, how rich, how poor, how beautiful you believe you are. Mm -hmm. One thing that you rich folk and poor folk got in common is a place called the grave. Rich man, you can get buried in a solid, pure gold casket. But not even your casket can keep the worms out. That's right. Hey, you in a solid gold casket? Lined with silk, diamond rhinestones, all engraved in it. Here's a poor man. Ain't got nothing but a raggedy old sheet wrapped around his body and dropped in the hole. One thing about both of you, you can't keep the worms out. Scripture says it this way. How do the wise man die? As the fool. He died. As the fool. As the fool. So to my wealthy millionaire heathens, <laughs> you got a God to obey. You can jump around and party and do anything you want, but I'm telling you right now, right. you're going to stand before God. That's right. You're going to stand before God. Right. You're going to stand before God. Right. The Bible said, I saw the small and great stand before God. Right. And that's something that no human under the sun will ever avoid or get around. Right. Repent of your sins, stiff-necked. Repent of your sins, Miss Cutie. That's right. Repent of your sins, drug dealer. Yeah. Repent of your sins, you that walk around with your pants sagging like you went to the bathroom for a month. Uh -huh. Repent of your sins, first lady. That's right. Bishop, repent of your sins. Bishop. Junior Bishop, yeah. repent of your sins. Lord, right. take God and be baptized. Who? Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right. 
in order to get your sins washed away. And then wait until the Lord God of heaven and earth that gave you life fill you with the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongue that the Spirit of God give out. If you don't want to go to hell and burn forever, you will take heed to this warning. I don't care if you don't like me. Get over it. I'm warning you. Not liking me is still not going to slow your journey down to the grave. Amen. You're still going to get there. And once you get there, your ignorant, foolish, hell-bound street friends can stand over you and dump a couple of bags of cocaine and yes. drop some Jack Daniels over your grave. You're still going to be dropped in hell. Amen. It won't be no rip for you. No. It won't be no R.I.P. for you. Oh, no. It won't be no rest in peace for you. Oh, no. Now, if there's anybody here that's wise and understand that they're nothing but dust and understand you only have the breath in your nostrils and you want to get right with God and you want God to be in your life and you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. If you want it, stand on your feet. Glory to God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah to God. You that are standing, you see them that are standing all the way in the back? You that are standing, them that are standing all the way in the back, go right where they are. Glory to God. Once you repent of your sins and go down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, don't step foot back in a false religion or a false church while you live. You see, when you baptize, you don't need to get baptized. You're going to run back to a fake religion. Or it take God when you repent of your sins and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of that fake religion and stay out. And walk with the way of holiness. Amen. When you do that, the God of peace will be with you. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one.